the Las Aranias people had their eyes on Constance Webb and they also took that woman away to save her life. But these readers didn't have their eyes on Ezekiel. What the hell was that? These people didn't even have the idea that sending out two people to catch Ezekiel would be more than enough and the entire movie could have been different. But instead, they decided to put a useless curse on this man, Jesus Christ. He used your mom to find us, but because he stole the spider, he was cursed. You will. Do you know what this means? What? It means that their printer is broken. We can't eat here anymore. <laughs> oh my god. This is the most hilarious dialogue I have ever heard in my whole life. Who the hell wrote that thing? I definitely want to give that man an Oscar from Walmart. I'll be back tomorrow, but no more excuses. I, I swear, why? Exactly where can I find these kinds of well-behaving landlords in the New York City? Do these kinds of landlords even exist? Oh, that's really funny. You're such a funny guy. <laughs> Are you pressing the burgers? I'm releasing the fat. These dialogues are so cringe, I literally feel like these words are crawling on my skin. My mother always cut the crusts off my sandwiches. My mom said the crusts would make my hair go curly. It was years before I figured that one out. <laughs> I don't understand how can people afford to laugh at jokes like this. My 365 year old grandma can crack up a better joke than this. Uh, obviously it was bad, but you know. She died. <laughs> Who the hell on earth chuckles like this while explaining the death of a beloved one? I guess the spider venom did some damage to her brain as well. I grew up totally healthy. I came from nothing, less than nothing. I will not give up everything I've built and have my life cut short. In the future, I become much more. In the, in the future, future, they will destroy me and everything I've built. Dude, exactly what the hell did you build with your spidey power? Are we never gonna sneak a peek at his empire? This dude definitely has an empire made of Lego bricks. That's your emergency. That. Is it not a coincidence that all the future enemies of Ezekiel are also living within the New York City? Why could it not be somewhere else? How about North Korea or China or even Afghanistan? Would Ezekiel also go over there to kill those enemies? This is the train to Mount Vernon, right? Hey, am I on the right train? You know what? This man over here asking Cassie to wise in two different trains to confirm whether his train is heading towards Mount Vernon or not is really dumb. But do you know who else is even dumber than that? The script writer of this dog shit movie. You guys need to call for backup. That will not be necessary as long as you work. Wait, what? No, it's not for you. When these girls were calling for help from the subway police, they literally attempted to arrest Cassie without any proof, without any background check. These girls didn't even say that Cassie was trying to kidnap them. Moreover, these police officers were standing in a different platform, meaning they have not seen Cassie or any of the three girls yet. So what the hell was that? I was nuts. Do you guys think he killed those cops? This woman literally stole away a taxi in the middle of the broad daylight from a place filled with tracking cameras connected to the city watch and yet she was able to stay in cover for more than two days without alarming the local police. What the hell am I watching? You know they can track those nowadays, right? You can't. Hey! You can't do that! She's right. Cassie throws away the mobile phone of Maddie so that nobody can track their location. But was that even necessary? Absolutely not. If she could just simply turn off the mobile phone, nobody would be able to track their location either. The only thing the local police could ever find out is their last location. So instead of throwing that phone away, she could simply just keep that phone inside the glove box of the taxi. In fact, their last location has already been tracked by the local police since their mobile phone was turned on. What kind of stupid move was that? Um, I grew up totally healthy. Wait, you're the paramedic. You've saved my stepmother, then you were super awkward about it. I recognize you too. What? So these two girls literally saw Cassie face to face in the past and yet it took them a couple of hours to recognize her. Julia saw Cassie face to face in the hospital for straight half a minute and Anya on the other hand lives in the same apartment as Cassie and she has been watching Cassie frequently. And even after that, these two idiots couldn't manage to recognize Cassie in the aftermath. How can someone be so much preoccupied in life without being on drugs? We'll be 
okay, Julia. We don't need a babysitter. Oh, yeah, sure. Just three teenagers alone in the woods. Definitely not the opening of a horror film. Exactly. Cassie couldn't even manage to find out a better place to hide these three teenage girls other than a secluded jungle. She also claims that this place is much safer than any other places she can even imagine. You are way safer out here. Somebody has to whisper into her bloody ears that these kinds of secluded areas are considered a mecca for abduction, rape, robbery, and all kinds of smuggling activities. She is a good example on why a man should use protection during intercourses. Um, I grew up totally healthy. Just stay here and don't do anything dumb. Seriously, don't do dumb things. She is telling that thing as if she is the most intelligent species over there in the movie. And are incredibly fast, incredibly strong, and they can climb like spiders. Did you hear that? Now it looks more like the scriptwriter of this movie also has some vocabulary issues and doesn't know how to articulate something in an intriguing manner. I wonder who wrote the script of this movie? A Spanish immigrant student with an ILTS score of 5.5? Cassie was reading about her mom's research for the 110 times and pretending as if she got to know about them for the first time. And then she goes to see if she can climb like a spider on the wall or not. I gotta say, the script writer of this movie not only just wrote dumb things but also let his intrusive thoughts win throughout the entire movie. Also, listen to the background score during that scene. It sounds as if she was performing a very serious activity. I guess the editor of this movie was also high on something. Oh my god. I don't understand why Cassie was so surprised to see this man on the photograph. She is pretending as if she never unlocked the briefcase in the past and looked at the same photograph for a hundred more times. Whenever Ezekiel touches and squeezes somebody, his hand releases a toxin that goes into the blood of the victim and causes cardiac arrest. Now that's fine, but how the hell on earth can he ingest venom into someone's body when he is wearing that phony fucking spider suit? The skin of that man is not even exposed. My mom's in a psych ward, so I got sent to live with him and his new family and I don't think that they want me there. My parents aren't around either. I think they resent how having a kid messed up their lives. My dad got deported six months ago. Is it not weird that the parents of these three teenage girls are not available to go for some emergency help at the exact same time? The situation is surprisingly very convenient for the stupid plot of the storyline. Jesus Christ. You have come back looking for answers. I promised your mother I would be here. How can this dude recognize that it was Cassie? It could also be a random tourist roaming over there. Now, just don't tell me in the comment box that this guy can also see the future like Cassie and he knew from the very beginning about what Cassie would look like in her early 30s. Do you trust me? This dude had a conversation with Cassie literally for two minutes and now he is asking if Cassie would trust him or not. It's a lot like a random guy I have met in the subway who is asking me if I trust him or not and approaching me to follow him to a questionable place. Obviously not the beginning of a crime scene, eh? You did it. You did it. I never knew I was sick. Oh boy, Dakota Johnson definitely needed a little bit more acting classes on this, you know? Not only the dialogues in this movie are cringe, but also the delivery of the dialogues is so weak. I need you to get Mary as far away from us as possible. Okay, Ezekiel, he won't care about you now. This really doesn't make any sense to me. If I was the villain over here, I would at least have the common sense to realize that I can manipulate the intentions and actions of Cassie by abducting Mary and blackmailing her. Now I bet this guy has an empire made of Lego bricks only. This dude built a huge empire made of Lego bricks. He can ingest venom into the vein and blood vessels of others without getting his skin exposed. He can dodge a freaking firecracker. He is the king of the Lego world and yet he couldn't even manage to design a spider suit that can resist electricity. Now that's a shame. Are these the shadows of things that must be? Or are the only shadows of things that might be? 
Who is that man talking on the television? If you don't live in America, just know one thing that the old man on the television is Scrooge. This is a Christmas Carol episode and this old man Scrooge saw a ghost during the Christmas Eve who showed him a bleak future of himself. Watching this, Scrooge gets terrified and questions the ghost on whether he can change his destination or it has already been fixed. But the ghost remained silent after this question was asked. And guess what? The situation of Madame Webb matches very very well with the situation of Scrooge. My mother always cut the crusts off my sandwiches. My mom said the crusts would make my hair go curly. It was years before I figured that one out. 